Cozy Gloves here, and today this is my book review of a book I just finished called This Is Your Brain on Music by Daniel Olivetian. If you go to the next page, there's actually a, a picture of him. It's kind of tiny. There it is. This is a really good book. This book goes over, he's actually written several books, and I like him as a writer. I think he's a great writer. I picked it up because I wanted to understand hearing music and how that worked out. But I've like learned so much more than just that. It goes over parts of the brain, what each part does. So like you figure out, like, oh, this is what this part of the brain does. But then it goes through this part of the brain. But then at the same time, there's a process through here. And we've identified, oh, this is where pitch is identified. But we don't know where the notes and the comparison between the notes go. And then where are the social cues developed and all these different things. Like at what point do you like get the music? You know what I'm saying? Like at what point is it? in you like where do those preferences come from how do those affect society and culture and you look at this from like a whole nother standpoint because it's pretty obvious that art will always reflect cult reflect culture but when you look at the neurology behind it you're just like whoa this is a lot about the people who are enjoying this type of music where it came from possible social roles that it plays and there's the big debate about did speech come before music and he argues that music came first and just all these things from an evolutionary standpoint. And so there's loads and loads of interesting ideas and uh, research having been done. There's some really cool experiments like asking women whether they prefer, depending on what point they are in their fertility cycle, if they prefer a creative person over a rich person, if the creative person had was very creative, but just was having bad luck with the finance side versus the rich person who just got lucky. And it's kind of interesting to see how the answers changed based on the, where the women were in their cycle. So there's just weird stuff like that is kind of in there. It covers things like the, the first experience you have with music, things that tend to get music listeners hooked on music, things like baby development and the best stages to introduce music at well, not necessarily the best stages, but recognized results from studies, all, all sorts of interesting things like preferences. Can you develop preferences in the womb and things like that? And so if you're interested in those sorts of things, you could totally look up this book and get a really great read out of it. I was, I was more than happy with it. I, it was a great book. Totally recommend it. If you are into music, he does cover some basic music theory as well. If you don't know that kind of stuff, because he is a musician and he does an excellent job of bringing it down to a level that anyone can understand. At least I feel like he did an awesome job. There was no part that I was like, what the heck does this mean? So that's that. That's my book review. I think it's a really great book. I think it's total. I think it's like a must read almost if you're into the music business because it causes you to look at music in a way that you I didn't even know you could really look at it from before because now when someone's listening to it, whether or not that person likes that piece of music, I'm not going to look at them and be like, why don't you like this music? This is good music. Instead, I've got like a whole slew of ideas on possibilities on why they don't like this music. Cultural backgrounds, circumstantial backgrounds, experience backgrounds. Uh, and there's also like possibilities of disorders and other problems. And that also came along with, I read this book along with Oliver Sacks' book, uh, Musicophilia, which is also an awesome book. So those combined have really helped me to gain a perspective on music and culture how it influences people and the power it has as well as social roles and just ways of writing interesting, good music. Like at what point does the complexity outweigh the music and how do you get a listener to move into more complex areas? How do you get them to move into simple areas and still enjoy the music? There's just, it's just this really interesting middle ground. But anyways, if you're into that kind of a thing, I think this is a book that you like just got to read. It's a really good read. It's just fun. It's just Fun because you it's like information you can take and apply in your life immediately. You're just like, wow, this is happening all the time around me. And I was just never aware of it. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.